The South African Navy has been called in to help locate eight suspected illegal fishing vessels off the coast of Guazulu Natal and the Eastern Cape. Patrol boats spotted nine fishing vessels in the area on Thursday. Authorities impounded one of them and the other eight escaped. The impounded vessel arrived in Cape Town today. Now, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago and its waters cover a vast area and that means it's very difficult to stop illegal fishing. In fact, the government estimates it is costing them $20 billion every year. Vast in scope and size, there is only one true ocean on Earth. This connected body of water surrounds the continents and is divided into five major regions. The Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic and Southern Oceans. Taken together, the oceans cover more than 70% of Earth's surface and gives the planet more than 25,000 species of fish inhabit the Earth's rivers, lakes, and oceans. Fish have more recognized species than any other vertebrate and their inhabitants range from the smallest freshwater streams to the deepest seafloor canyons. They grow from a fraction of an inch to 50 feet and live anywhere from the Arctic waters to the tropics. Fishing is the principal livelihood for over 200 million people and provides the main source of protein for more than a billion. But all is not well in the ocean. The world's fish stocks are not only under the threat from intense illegal fishing activities, they are also at risk from illegal, unreported, and unregulated, also known as IUU fishing. My name is Karen Norris. I am the Advanced Placement Environmental Science uh, teacher here at Heritage High School. Okay, so your first question is, do you know what illegal fishing is and how it's in cooperation with NEO and so uh, what makes fishing Ill illegal is that there are certain limitations that are put on how much uh, or how many fish you can catch at a time. Um, it goes back to looking at population sustainability regarding fish populations and if we are overfishing those those uh, different types of fish then they cannot recover from that there becomes a tipping point of when the population will never be able to recover so the imperialism part of it is that those with the more money are going to be able to get there faster those with the more money are going to be able to pay the fines um, or the taxes or whatever it is um, that are going to go on with breaking these these laws um so he who gets there faster uh is gonna win that's basically what it comes down to thank you and your second question is what are your initial views of illegal fishing um i think it's one of those uh, uh the the fish population the oceans the air everything is is what we come what we call the commons right so it is a tragedy of the commons we all have to live here and live on this earth um together and we have to share resources. So if one particular country or person or whatever it is is taking the resources and the majority of those resources away from everybody, then it becomes a problem. Um, it's, it's to my personal viewpoint, it is a byproduct of greed. Um, uh, more, more, more. And at the same time, I understand the flip side of that coin is that they are trying to feed a family. They're trying to make a living, especially in some of these countries where the restrictions are not as, as heavy as they are in maybe a more developed country, um, you know, that, that they are going to take more than what they're supposed to, but it's, it's out of need and necessity. So it's very, also very hard to, um, you know, make this, this person or this uh, developing country um, into, you know, the evil people because it's, you know, they gotta live, gotta eat. So, okay. Um, your third question is how do you think it can be stopped or more regulated? So I think it's going to be very difficult. The ocean is huge. This isn't like coming across on a, with a semi truck across the border and we have border stops and things. This is, uh, and, and there are not enough, um, policing enforcements as, as going around and checking and they do the best they can, but how do you find the people in these oceans to be able to, um, to stop them? So I think it's, going to be very difficult. It's also going to take um, multiple governments interacting with each other to enforce uh, international laws. Um, nationally, and in the U.S., I think they try their best um, you know, to catch no matter what that is, whether it's fishing or any other type of um, hunting or, or um, you know, catching big game, etc. But it takes a lot of uh, money just to enforce it. So 
it's it's kind of an uphill battle battle and as soon as you put one regulation into place there's going to be people who find the loophole and work around it so it's just trying the best education and educating people of why this is bad is probably an even better tactic than um you know coming from guns a blazing on the other side is if you can stop there or or um, prevent and in apes we talk a lot about preventing the problem prior to is a better way of dealing with something than it is to just have a solution because once you have a solution the problem has already been um caused right there's already an issue mm -hmm. so um you know it's 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 going to be an uphill battle no matter what no matter what we, we, we implement, it's going to be difficult. Fish are amongst the most extensively traded commodities in the world, with a global export value of almost 60 billion U.S. dollars. In the global south, seafood products comprise of 20% of agricultural and food exports. That's more than nuts, spices, cotton, and sugar put together. Much of this trade is facilitated by distant water fishing fleets from the global north entering southern waters. For example, by disregarding fishing times or the existence of the state's protected areas, some IUU vessels operate in the waters under the jurisdiction of the West African states. As these countries generally cannot afford to establish effective fisheries, control structures. The IUU vessels are able in many cases to operate with impunity. With this being in effect, neo-imperialism is a common factor with these certain countries. As in this black market, however, estimates are bound to be unreliable. Some experts put the annual figure at 11 million tons. Others suggest that it may be as high as 26 million tons equal to 14 or 33 percent respectively of the world's total legal catch recorded in 2011. Would you go illegal fishing if it meant you make a millions of US dollars and wouldn't have to pay for taxes? Yeah that sounds pretty nice to me. And why? Um I feel like even though that's not too much of an honest living because you are cheating someone in the end that there's not enough restrictions against it for me, for someone like me to get stopped from it. So it sounds like almost like a viable living to me. When Indonesian officials catch a boat fishing illegally, this is what they do with it. There's no legal process. They simply blow up the boats. Millions of Indonesians rely on fishing to survive, and the coast of Java is heavily fished. But fishing families say it's getting harder to make a living and they're being left behind in terms of technology and skills. Anytime you're talking about multiple countries, you are, or you're now talking about multiple different cultures and religions and ideals and, you know, how do you get these people to come together to understand, um, you know, understand what, what the importance is of dealing with these common areas, you know, the tragedy of the commons, like I said before, that that this is extremely important that we preserve what we have for future generations. Mm -hmm. The problem is, uh, I always say that the drift net fishing is like the clear cutting of the sea. You use those and they absolutely wipe the bottom completely clean and it doesn't matter what bycatch is in there. So whatever they're trying to target, they're not getting just those fish, they're getting everything else. Um, it is the most devastating detrimental way to fish. It doesn't surprise me that, um, just like with anything, just because we're talking about the environment doesn't change people. And, um, you know, someone's going to try to go in and steal a candy bar from the convenience store, for example, or, you know, hold up a bank or whatever. It's the same scenario. It's the same thing. But it's instead of the bank that you're holding up, you're holding up everyone, right? The entire nation that should, or the entire globe that should have access to these things. You're robbing everyone of those things, not just this one convenience store. Um, so, uh, you know, it doesn't surprise me that people are trying to get around doing all of those things, uh, getting around paying the taxes, getting around, um, you know, how can I get the most money? That's human nature. So how do we fix that? That is a gigantic question.
And why it's so difficult to do is, again, like I said, uh, education level, culture, religion, uh, you, the, how stringent the laws are and from one country to the next because there's not necessarily, if there are international laws put in place, you know, there are some international laws that are put in place, they're not enforced in one country. They're not as important. Um, and it's hard to, again, hard to say this law and tax is extremely important when you're just scraping by to feed your family. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's something that we, we can't solve this problem of the world in one sitting, but it's definitely wonderful to have an open conversation about it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anytime. Hello? Hi, is this Kathleen? Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Teresa from the Turtle Hospital. Hi, yes. Um, earlier I spoke to another associate of yours, and I was, I'm doing a project on illegal fishing. And I was uh, wondering if I could borrow one to two minutes of your time. Sure. Okay. So uh, my question is, does illegal fishing actually affect how many sea turtles you bring in every year due to the catch or how it affects the ocean and the sea turtle? Um, well, depends on the type of fishing. Because, like, here, like, we do get turtles that come in, like, with fish hooks or, like, fishing line entanglements, things like that. Um, but, like, there's turtles that die out there because they get stuck in the trawling nets and they drown. So it's right. more like bycatch. Um, and then also a lot of, like, the long lining, things like that. They get the long lining, most of that is very deep water fishing. Mm -hmm. And they just string out the lines with all of these massive fish hooks. And some of them will even put... Um, glow sticks to attract the fish and sea turtles think they're like bioluminescent jellyfish and so they'll get attracted too and right. either go after the bait so they'll get fish hooks inside of them or they'll get entangled in it and drown. Absolutely. Do you think that's one of the reasons why like like sea turtles are kind of like on the line for endangerment all over the globe? Oh, it's definitely one of the reasons. Okay. Well, I appreciate so much of your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye.